a Mare Brown Arthur chapter book. Arthur and the Poetry Contest, text by Stephen Krensky. Based on a teleplay by Joe Fallon. Chapter 1 Mr. Ratburn stood at the front of the class. He was holding a list of names. At least, it was supposed to be a list. However, there was only one name on it, which made it barely a list at all. There are only two days left until the library poetry contest, he told the class. This is supposed to be the list of participants. But so far, only one student Fern has signed up. Everyone turned to look at Fern. She stared at the floor. Fern never said she wrote poetry, Francine whispered. Fern never says anything, Muffy reminded her. Writing poetry is worse than eating snails, said Binky. If I wrote it, I wouldn't admit it, either. Mr. Ratburn cleared his throat. The judge for this contest is the famous poet Jack Prelutsky. And it's still not too late to enter. I'm a poet and I don't even know it, said Buster. You've got a rhyme every time, Muffy added. Arthur raised his hand. I know a poem he wrote. It's called My Sister is a Sissy. Can you recite it for us? asked Mr. Ratburn. Arthur wasn't sure. I'll try, he said. My sister is a sissy, she's afraid of dogs and cats, a toad can give her tantrums, and she's terrified of rats, she screams at things with stingers, things that buzz, and things that crawl, just the shadow of a spider sends my sister up the wall. A lizard makes her shiver, and a turtle makes her squirm, she positively cringes at the prospect of a worm, she's afraid of things with feathers, she's afraid of things with fur, she's scared of almost everything, how come I'm scared of her? That's all, said Arthur, pleased he could remember it. If D.W. were my sister, Francine whispered to Muffy, I'd be afraid of her, too. An excellent poem, Mr. Ratburn noted. And speaking as someone who has a sister, I can agree with the sentiment. He sighed. Now, I know a lot of you may not have thought much about poetry before, but it is truly one of the most powerful and fun literary forms. It is also one of the oldest. The Trojan War, for example, was described in a long poem by the Greek poet Homer in around 900 BC. The poem is called The Iliad. Binky frowned. Isn't that the story where some soldiers hid inside a horse? Exactly, said Mr. Ratburn. The horse was the source of the force of course, commented the brain. Everyone laughed. You're all very talented, Mr. Ratburn continued, which is why I'm encouraging you to enter the contest. As a special treat, Mr. Prelutsky will be speaking at the Elwood City Library after school on Thursday. Francine nudged Arthur. Listen, I'm a poet. Moon, June, spoon, tune a loon. Will you be done soon? Arthur asked. Before noon, Francine replied sweetly. Arthur was glad to hear it. Chapter 2 it was just after twelve when the class ate lunch in the cafeteria. Fern sat alone, working on her poem while she ate. Binky and Rattles started talking as they approached her table. Just thinking about poetry makes me sleepy, said Binky. He let out a big yawn. Then he closed his eyes and began to snore. Hey, Binky, said Rattles. Wake up! Binky fell back limply, but Rattles reached out to catch him. Come on, Binky, said Rattles. I've got a question for you. Binky opened one eye. What? What's twice as boring as a poem? Binky frowned. I give up. Two poems. A lot of the kids nearby laughed. But not Fern. She gathered her things and stood up. You only make fun, she told Binky, because you couldn't write a poem if your life depended on it. Then she walked out. 
all the kids gasped. Francine was impressed. That's the most Fern has said all year. And it was well put, the brain noted Binky didn't like the way everyone was giggling at him. He ran to catch up with Fern. The other kids followed him out. Fern and Binky faced each other in the hall. What do you want now? Fern asked. Binky put his hands on his hips. Maybe I couldn't write a poem fast, he told her. But neither could they, he added, pointing to the other kids. Wait a minute, said Francine. I could if I wanted to. Me, too, said Arthur. No problem. Binky stared at them. Ha! I could write a better poem than you with my brain tied behind my back. Really? said Arthur, snickering. I'd like to see that. Oh, you would, would you? Yeah. That's what I said. Fern stepped between them. Hold on, she said. Till bet none of you can write a decent poem. I can so. Francine insisted. Yeah, me, too, said Buster. I think I can. Sue Ellen chimed in. Arthur folded his arms. Maybe Binky can't, but I can. I can do anything Arthur can, Binky declared. I can write a poem like that, Arthur insisted, trying to snap his fingers. Fern, I cannot believe you would question my poetic capability, said the brain. Hold me back! Binky exclaimed. Somebody hold me back, or I'll write a poem right now. Quiet! Fern shouted. They all closed their mouths at once. It was not that Fern was such a commanding figure. They had just never heard her yell before. Now, Fern continued more calmly, we'll see who can do what. You can each write a poem and enter it in the poetry contest. Anyone who doesn't finish in time has to join the poetry club for a whole year. Is it a bet or are you a bunch of chickens? No problem, said Binky. Prepare to be humiliated, the brain told her. I'm ready, said Francine. You're going to lose a bet, said Muffy. Arthur and Buster nodded. Fern smiled. Good. How do you write a poem? Arthur whispered to Buster. Buster shrugged. I thought you knew. Arthur shook his head. He had no idea. But how hard could it be? Chapter 3 Arthur and Buster entered the library together. I don't want to go to poetry club for a whole year, said Arthur. Buster shuddered. It would be a fate worse than death. But don't worry. It'll be a cinch to get out of this. We'll just find a good poem and, um, write one like it. They charged up to the front desk. Which way to the good poems? asked Arthur. Miss Turner looked up from her desk. The good poems? We're short on time, Buster explained. So we don't want to read bad ones. We want to skip right to the good stuff. I see, said Ms. Turner. Do you have any other criteria or guidelines? Buster thought for a moment. Well, we need to be able to understand them. Poems we can't understand will not help, Arthur agreed. All right, said Ms. Turner. Do you want old poems or more recent ones? Old, Buster blurted. What difference does that make? Arthur whispered to him. If we're going to borrow from poems, said Buster, it will be better if the poets are dead. That way, they can't get mad at Arthur turned back to the librarian. Definitely old, he said. Old, old, old. With Miss Turner's help, they quickly gathered armfuls of books and piled them on a table. Buster flipped one open. What do you think of this? 
The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. Buster stared at the page. This is goofy. I don't think I can write like this. Arthur agreed. Let's find one that makes more sense. Buster flipped through another book and read. Something better than his dog, a little dearer than his horse. Buster frowned. What does mean? Maybe it's a riddle, said Arthur. What's better than his dog, a little deer, and then his horse? One no, one no, cried Buster. A gerbil that can do your homework. I've never heard of a gerbil like that. Me, neither, Buster admitted. But wouldn't it be neat? Arthur closed the book. I think we should just skip this guy. Buster picked up a book entitled Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. Whoa! Listen to these titles. The Haunted Palace and the Conqueror Worm. He started reading aloud. It was the dead who groaned within. Arthur's eyes opened wide. Wow. Still a little strange, though. Here's one that sounds more familiar. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. That has a good beat, said Arthur. Kind of like a horse galloping, Buster noted. Hey! Paul Revere was riding a horse. Do you think the poet did that on purpose? He might have. Poets are tricky like that. Not me.